The goal is to evaluate a line integral over a vector field using Stokes' theorem. So I'm giving you the punchline of the theorem first, and then in green down there and in purple, I have some conditions that have to hold. Uh, but, but the imp important thing to memorize is, is what I put in the box there. And basically what Stokes' theorem says is that the line integral with respect to a vector field in, in certain conditions, f dot dr, is going to be equal to a surface integral over s, um, and the integrand is the curl of f, so that's one object, dot n, and then ds. This is where S is an oriented piecewise smooth surface bounded by C, a piecewise smooth positively oriented closed curve. F has to be very well behaved. Uh, so uh, one way of saying that is F has continuous first partials in an open region containing S. So but what is the part that says um, S is bounded by C? What could that possibly mean? So it's not a closed surface. So the picture then, so let's say you have a hill. I often draw my surface as a hill. It could be a depression, though. It doesn't matter. Um, let's say it looks something like that. So this is my surface, S. And then this curve down here, where I cut it off down here, this would be your boundary curve, C. And if we assume an upward orientation so that you get normal vectors that, you know, the, the vectors vary in some continuous way, the normal vectors vary in some continuous way, but the k components are, are positive, at least until you get to the, the boundary curve itself, you'll have positive k components, won't you? So this curve in black here is, is what we're referring to as the boundary curve. And if you're a little person walking around the base of this hill on that boundary curve, and your head is headed in the same direction as N, then the surface, this hill, will always be on your left if you're walking positively around that curve. So this would be your positive orientation. And if you look at it from above, then it is counterclockwise, right? So that's what we mean. Uh, the surface has a rim. I like to call C the rim. And then it gives you a nice visualization of what I mean. So that boundary curve C is its rim. Does that make sense? OK. So why is this statement true? Well, because I said so, yeah. Um, I, I don't know how much we're going to get into proof, but, but think about it this way. You believed it last time when we did. I wouldn't call it a rigorous proof, but we did a proof of Green's theorem, right? And, and what, did Green's what did Green's theorem say? Um, in the plane, S, de S devolves into a flat surface, right? So um, let's, say, let's say we're in the plane, and then S devolves into this flat region, which we often call D or R. And we know that from the discussion last time, then, that the integral over this C here, assuming that, at, that this surface is in the xy plane, that um, it's going to be the line integral. Let me say it this way, that, that line integral with respect to some underlying vector field. So this surface is immersed in a vector field that I'm not picturing here. We showed you last time that you will get, if you manipulate it correctly, that that line integral is equal to the surface integral, where s is equal to r or d in this case. We're calling it d. Uh, of curl of f dotted with what's our normal vector in the plane? Uh, okay. k, the unit normal vector, right? D R, well, dA is the same as ds in, in the plane. Um, and so you believe this, right? So all we're really saying is if you warp 
if you warp S, so this surface here, in some reasonable way, so that the surface remains smooth or piecewise smooth, um, and of course you don't do anything crazy with C, we're saying it'll still be true. And that's because what happens when you're dealing with a smooth surface? We haven't talked about it that much, but back in Calculus 1, you talked a lot about if you zoom into a differentiable function. So remember in Calc 1, all your differentiable functions, for the most part, were nice, smooth curves, weren't they? Something like that. And what happens when you zoom in on any little part of that curve? You get something that looks like a line, don't you? And so you have this similar idea with a smooth surface. If you zoom in on it, if you zoom in far enough, like to this patch of it, it's going to look like a flat plane, right? So it's not too hard to believe that um, just because you warp the surface a little bit, it's not too hard to believe that that relationship between the line integral f dot dr and the surface integral curl of f dot k, it's not too hard to believe that that wouldn't change too much. That's my hand wavy argument. But that's good for now. <laughs>